good evening and namaste everybody welcome to this session on it, on china's military civil fusion conducted by indic researchers forum irf is an independent research organization that researches on geopolitics national security culture history and social sciences through a civilizational perspective the idea is to propagate research and the notion that the country has a civilizational heritage that is much larger and older than its recent history i am rakesh akolkar your host for the session currently i am a research associate for the forum for this session we are delighted to have commodore vijesh garg sir a vishisht seva medal awardee he was commissioned in the indian navy in 1984 he is a naval aviator and an anti submarine warfare specialist with rich experience of flying from aircraft carriers and ships he was trained in the united kingdom and france he is an alumni of iit roorkee indian naval academy dssc wellington cdm secunderabad he also holds p pg degree in defense and strategic studies he has also served on the faculty of college of defense management and the visiting faculty for college of air warfare he has commanded three naval warships one naval air squadron two naval air stations and delhi naval area his last assignment was deputy director of general of ncc directorate tamil nadu pondicherry andaman and nicobar islands currently he is a visiting faculty at iit liba nift amit chennai and executive director of chennai center of china studies over to you sir for the enlightening session thank you so much agish Good evening, everybody, in Indic Research Forum. The management of this uh, research forum and all the audience. The topic which we are talking today is trying to decode the China's military-civil fusion. Now, this topic has been being talked in so many forums by Western countries, Indians, and including Chinese papers. for the benefit of all i have tried to amalgate as many thought process from various angles from various luminaries papers presentations so that we have a fused uh, presentation and of course the knowledge game for all of you so what is civil military fusion basically to my talk is basically i'm trying to uh, structure uh, structure my talk basically on line of what is military civil fusion all about or civil military fusion or integration as it is called sometime what is the basic concept all about how does it fit in a national security angle why is so important anybody pay up paying attention to it then i'll give a small perspective to very lighter perspective you appreciate what is we are talking about why it is becoming so important then i will take you to a journey of how china went into this whole process and today they are threatening the whole world how they achieved what all they have done what good what bad we will see that after that i'll give you a gist of glance of the whole civil military fusion what china has done achieved and what is the aim behind it which has been their focus areas and the last part of mine will be let us look at other countries how they have gone some of them gone shorter way some have gone big way and the last part will be what the thought process we carry back home what where we are what can we do possible not possible which are the areas or so try to respond deliberate with you on that then you can have question answers i have tried to structure my all talk through a slides so that we can interact better and then question answers we have all the questions which you have i will try to take on so this is what this is a chinese military civil system of strategy combined system of strategies and making their strategic capability as a nation this is what military civil fusion is all about and next slide please yeah now i said why this topic is so important why everybody is worried about it because a national security of any nation is not military alone this is a wrongly think i was talk about mostly 
it is a national so called the comprehensive national park that is a country is known for a strong country or a weak country can i fight with him can i not fight with him if required so what is the components are part of that that is economic and food security unless you are economic strong you can't make your military also strong because money is required to make the military strong so economic security food security for people external security that is your foreign policies foreign relations and your military capabilities come here in point 2 the third one is your internal security americans call homeland security after tony jicks a 911 we call it internal security in the art terms your home grown security then of course your intelligence organization whether the external intelligence your internal intelligence your military intelligence and put all together how you are getting your inputs how good they are how timely they are i get intelligence about two days too late for me is it not good for me so how good they are the next is the requisite infrastructure of all type in all domains i covered in one line what it means whether you are talking a maritime structure you are talking air infrastructure you are talking a land rail you name it industry correct so any type of infrastructure hilly terrain coastal terrain your corridors your sagar mala is towards that only now which is called sagar mala project what is that connecting the ports to the interland so all type of infrastructure you should have industrial base how a nation has industrial base good industry advanced industrial base poor industrial base only msmes or you have a capital industry uh, intensive industry which can make anything how good you are in that and of course what sort of entrepreneurship your country has is a part of national security which is often neglected then a nation is equipped with what sort of technology and technology must be keeping with place with a good global trend if today everybody talking ai i don't have i'm not i'm not keeping a pace with them i'll be left behind the next comes the research and development because here comes the crux as a nation develops and it goes to in a, as a competitors when the main nations are growing so you also going and you want to become a, as a competitors with them in a in a growing world your research and development agencies across is not only defense is across the faculties of industry or military or civil or universities i put in higher education you have so many universities what's the good universities they are what sort of research are going on there like you are you all are research associate what good research are you doing so that it can help it can add to the policy making the next comes the human resource major factor because it is the man behind the machine what matters be military or industry or any innovation so human resource is what we should not neglect and that is what is important should be healthy of course and he is ready to meet the challenge and right attitude means he is right equipped with knowledge he is has a right attitude to learn and do something for his nation and he is roaring to do something new not 9 to 5 not pay counting only pay no he is want to do much more dil mange more type so that human resource you need who can work if required for 18 hours 20 hours if required i will do this project let's do this thing better let's improve this that's what human resource we are talking about political system stability of the political system and the leadership it matters it matters a lot in need the national security because that is what others look at you national culture very two words but carrying a long long meaning into this national culture how a nations looking at the world today is we were a, we started 1947 in a small country just after independence but today a country which is whole world is looking at it. culture has changed we have made so many progresses so your culture is of progress not looking backwards last part is the government the governance structures that is comes your how your policies are interlinked with various department various agencies 
how smooth they are, how easy to do business there, how to do investment there. So that gives an incentive to a businessman or entrepreneur to invest money, to do new technology, they get incentive for this. All those things are part of your governance structures. Policies and policy coordination and integration because when you make a policy, maybe health, maybe infrastructure, maybe transport, maybe military, maybe education, but how they are interlinked so that you all are working toward the national cause, national security, making the country strong. That is what comprehensive national power is all about. And it encompasses, you name it, from agriculture to railway to shipping to aviation to education to nuclear scientists to you name it sports for that matter i'll say because it helps your motivation why not foreign relations commerce industries everything get linked into national security because at time you say only we says cabinet committee of security only five ministers so that, that no that is a wrong view we had so far we got to change next please so with this i come to the concept of mcf or cmf or M or cmi or mci various papers have used various words and i'll tell you why it is like that you know in india we often use the word civil military cooperation it is not anywhere just generally used during the administration when military is there there is a cantonment and there is some some roids there that you call military to help aid or civil administration that is cooperation integration is when you are actually using the civil facilities for military and military for civil they can be used as required that becomes the integration okay and fusion is you all i think one of your science, science students from 10th class onwards fusion and fusion fusion gives you a bigger picture when you add two and two it may not be four by 4.2 some steam is coming out additional that is fusion so fusion is a larger picture of your that's why it's not integration it becomes fusion is a larger picture now what happened is here basically is looking at those technologies if they are civil technologies can i use them for military purpose i can tune to military requirement vice versa there is a military technology which is available to me or infrastructure can i use for civil that's how it works you just saw the example banaras we made the highways which can take a aircraft to land there now correct now that is the dual use there's a highway i'm using it but at some places i'm broadened it aircraft can any emergency there if a field is pakistan has done it pakistan has done it near border areas so in emergency my a field has gone by bombarded i can use a runway it has been done in many sports so this is what how you look at it now other issue is when you make a military complex or civil military technology complex together you are actually building up your economy look at us you know what is us economy selling the arms to all the whole world this is a start from here that you have a technology making an aircraft i can make a fighter aircraft i can make a boeing boeing aircraft which is flying for civil and i can make a boeing convert into phi send into india 12 of them correct look at the, a company which is going to red it become absolutely green overnight it happened uk when westland was the going to the bad conditions indians of course we got the best helicopters that time but we bought 20 helicopters from them that was state of art the company from the red it became green so the economic part of it use civil facilities for military and military for civil is is basically looking at economic development of the country country's economy it get linked that way in the bargain what happens is your national capacity or military capacity or capability also builds up because you are use the technology and what are you doing is you are using the civil talents what about civil talents let's say yashas arya is a it expert is absolutely expert in ai and i navy looking for somebody I, after interaction today i just call him precious arya can you help me he comes to my office in delhi and says sir no project this project i will do with my my indic friends i will do it he makes a project for me this is what i'm doing it 
So I am using my civil talent and he is doing a military project. I have a trust. That's how US has gone up. Correct? We have we haven't gone to that level today till now. Similarly, infrastructure I give example to you. Now commercial logistics. They are civil airports, military can operate. They are military airports, civil, civil flying is being done. So there is an integration. Don't you know when any 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 disaster happens, the, the ships and the aircraft evacuation from Yemen, who did it? Ships and the aircraft. Correct? This is an example. So we can use dual use, similarly the technology. Do not forget the GPS was invented for military by US. It came down to all of us on the ground level. We are using it. Without GPS, we don't move. In your Gemini Jeff can't come to your house, or Swiggy can't come to your house. So basically, what MCF CMF comes out to be when military becomes the priority, which China has done, it becomes military civil fusion. Okay. When civilian use was earlier, priority taking military technology there, it was CMF. But China has turned into MCF because their whole aim is to make military more powerful of the country, better than anybody else by 2049. That is what China calls MCF. Otherwise, you find everywhere CMI, civil military integration. But China gave a term in the strategy, military civil fusion. They military is number one. That target. That's how it's small terms comes here. The next integration in MCF basically is all elements which are in your national power or your comprehensive national power military civil governance politics industry r d academia talent infrastructure and above is the political will correct this is our all the ingredients to make this nice biryani of 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 mcf if you want to make good biryani which china is doing it minute now what happens is is the whole nation's approach I told you all sectors are getting invited. That means whole nation is part of this business. Whole nation is part of this evolution, revolution, whatever you call it. And what are you doing is in the bargain you are making the comprehensive national power is going up in all directions. Military is just a byproduct. This is what you appreciate that. The whole problem is economy is going up. You are building a technology. In the bargain, military is also becoming advanced with advanced technology. Your military capability has gone up. The whole nation is actually gaining. National strength is becoming better. That's what the concept of MCF is. And remember, very important, it is irreversible. Means once you have taken this path, you don't come back. Government may change. The leadership may change. You look at US. From, from second of our onwards, they haven't gone back. So we're doing the China today. In India, if I can quote your economic reforms of Manmohan Singh, 91, which we quote everywhere, he started, it was a tough journey for that time, 91. I don't know how many of you were born that time, or very young that time. But those economic reforms, the governments have changed. The parties have changed in India, but nobody has touched the reforms. Of course, you can tweak here and there. Some names may change. Correct? But nobody has gone back on the reforms they have become better we can be 10 percent fdi 30 percent fdi today we are 100 percent fdi which were never thought of those days so it is irreversible once you take on path of mcf or cmf china has taken a path that they can evolve we want to become the best great nation by 2049 we want to become the most advanced military by 2049 and they are not looking back you like it or don't like it US has taken this path of economic development to military hardware, military software, latest cutting edge technologies. Whole world is with them. Where to buy otherwise? Some compete in competition, but they are the best. So this is how this has gone back. They're not going back. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay, so it will light a bit of historical or lighter perspective to all of you. Though so it's everywhere is written down just to connect you. Remember when the Chinese, I mean, this colonial time, the British warships went to with the opium war with the China. Correct? What was that? Because they were the ironclad ships. Small technology has come. 
and they were the winners. Chinese had tough time with them. Come next, you had the Industrial Revolution. Again, in the colonial area, Industrial Revolution in the 80s. Correct? What happened? Britishers could make ships, big ships, so called gunboats. And then that was the empire those days. British are ruling the whole world. They came to India also like that because they had the gunboats with them. Big, big ship, Bismarck, and all that. But what happened? If you don't keep pace with the technology, you are left behind. UK is one of them. What happened after Second World War? In Second World War, the US used all the complexes together to defeat the Germany and France, which we all know the history. And aircraft, ships, submarine, whatever you call it, bombs, they use everything. And that is what classic example of civil military. Or everybody was busy making something. Okay, that is what civil military fusion was. Everybody was contributing country to win. We should not lose it. Now, what happened? I mean, the Soviet Union, for that matter, before their disintegration, they used their civil complex, industrial complex to make military hardware. Of course, they are not advanced in technology, but those days hardware wall systems are there. I remember when we joined the Navy. In in the in the 80s, all ship the latest ship those days the Durgs and uh, SNFs had come. They, everything had a wall system. There no wall wall heating up. They know they, they know ICPC or semiconductors wall systems. Russians, but their their whole industrial complex are based on that. The, the, I mean, when we went to Russia, the lady used to put those things. You can see they are working in the factories. The civil factory they are making like like our MSMEs. They used to make small small part coming to this company. So that's how civilian complex are used for military requirement. Of course, and Russian only live on that economy for many, many years. Now look at Gulf War. In Gulf War, what happened? The satellite, US had the satellite. Nobody else had the satellite those days. They used the satellite for the communication, and those communication were the media. And they used it for the information warfare. First time I discussed in the 90s. You could see the war fighting in Iraq is sitting in your room, bedroom, or drawing room. So this was another use of civil technology for military use of military to civil and whole world was how can you see it? they actually change the perception of the whole world. Okay. Now, slightly away from this, just to put the right concept in your mind. We had COVID-19. All of us, two years back, somewhere in March, when we are all locked down our house, 45 days initially. Eric, what happened in our own country? I'm sure everywhere else also. In your own country, in your own city, we all didn't have masks, we didn't have PP kit, we had running shop oxygen concentrators, all those things were running around. What happened? The Maruti was making oxygen concentrator, military but military shipyards were making uh, PP. What what is happening? This military facility for civil use. Example, correct? So question is, what is the interface I'm talking about? This is an example. I'm giving you the right example to understand right now back home. If there is a military, if, if the military needs it, somebody else comes here. That is what the example is talking about. HADR, HADR is used the term military is human humanitarian assistance and disaster relief during disaster management. You see, I have been in tsunami in 2004. I was commanding in Port Blair. Okay, for four days you are cut off the whole world. You are only boss there. You had some aircraft with you and some sub ships with you. Even the children were born in the ship, bringing from Ireland to the mainland or to the port there. I give an example to Yemen. You have Air Force aircraft faster; they can go and come back. You have ships who are evacuating ships. Your ships who are taking vaccine to your IOR uh, countries. Correct. So this is I am talking about civil military interface. This is an example to you on the lighter side, not on the higher side. But they all are national resources. Now you understand what I'm talking about is this is a lighter interface, but can it, we are looking at the bigger interface how China has gone. Okay. Next slide, please. Yeah. So keeping this in mind, let me take you how China has gone in the journey. I go slowly, slowly, and then I'll come towards the end of what they have done so far. So you can understand the whole talk in a right perspective. Now, people say Xi Jinping is the hero who has done it. No, I don't think so. 
China actually started the journey long back. No nation become great overnight. So is India. We became independent in 1947. Last 60, 75 years, we have gained so much. Nothing happens overnight. So is China. So in 1956, the Mao's era, they were just coming out, all the problems they had, famine, famine and all that. But he, even then he said, because World War was just over, he said we should have two bombs. That is atomic bomb and the hydrogen bomb and we must have a satellite. That's the ambition he had, his tenure. Go to next era, 1980s, came the Deng Jinping. Now he was I mean, called as a modern architect of China because his theory was the people's war is under modern conditions. Things are changing. So we must have a moderate military with us. And he gave the principles of a beautiful book by, by Yale on this how the Chinese ink Chinese SOEs come up. So based on that, he took four fields of modernization. That is industry, science and technology, defense, and agriculture. A for agriculture. Agriculture, industry, science and technology, and defense. Four areas of his concentration. And from there, he started building up China from there. They developed the SOEs, so called state of operating enterprises, like our PSUs. And he started building up them in various. He was the one who opened the economy because they needed the money that time. So Chinese economy started building from there. And how they're building? Economy was building because military extra capacity was being used for civilian purposes. Because we have PSUs, big PSUs. He so said, no, you extra, you use it here. Get it? That's how they build up. And Chinese economy started picking up there and go by 2010. They were the second largest economy. Beginning was with Deng, Deng, the Deng Iras. That was civil military integration, which he defined. But in 1986, he came up with a national high technology program. Because if you want to make a stronger Navy, stronger Army, stronger Air Force, and you have ambition to make big, then you got to have a high technology program. In 1991-92, we had the Gulf War. That shook a rising China and the leadership. And because the satellite was used, they said, no, we should have the manned space program going on now. And actually, civil military integration picked up the steam in China in 1991 after the Gulf War. In 1995 came the Jamie Nera. Now, he said the wars are the high War will be fought now onwards under high technical condition because Gulf War has seen that. Correct? The Tomahawk missile goes to Tom Tom to window and says, This is Tomahawk and this also the house. So it's a high technology conditions. So he said, Let's make a plan for development and for deployment of strategic weapons. In 2000, they changed the concept of CMI to MCI. Means what? Now, military application became the priority because economy had picked up now say no let's build up our economy, military now and military become advanced now and 2006 came the Ho Jintao he was the gentleman who said no the war has to be now will be fought it is more of a digital world so it has to be informatized conditions so he came up with a national medium long term plan which is science and technology which is 2006 2020 this is the break also of the red letter day of china when they started looking up competing world we have to grow from here the aircraft carrier program india got our aircraft carrier second aircraft carrier 1987 virat remember china ambitions of going towards the sea actually started after that I add towards the end the story. So this is how China has grown in its MCM journey. Next, please. Yeah. After Jintao came the 
Xi Jinping era, 2000-2013, and they came up with the white paper, the Chinese white paper of 2012, very famous, in which they said it is a military which has to be, you know, diversified with energy and get the capacity building. The BRI projects came up, BRI strategy came, and Xi Jinping said, "We tomorrow's warfare is an intelligent warfare. It is no more high tech; it's intelligent warfare." So we got to get. The technology. Who had the technology? Only Western countries, U.S., France, Germany. They had the technology with them. Now, he used the terminology of IDAR, means identify the technology, introduce the technology in your system, somehow get it, introduce it, assimilate it, and then renovate, re-engineer the for Chinese requirement, for Chinese ships, Chinese aircraft, Chinese missiles, which is required. So it is identification, introduction, digestion, assimilation, and renovation. And PIAD to get this to get how to get technology, he said PIAD. What is P? Plan. Invest money there. Acquire it. Once you acquire the technology, disseminate all the labs which we have. Labs, universities, military centers, SOEs, pass to everybody so that. Everybody can work on this and come out the best solution for us. How we can use it? So these are the two concepts he used. In 2014, he made your military civil fusion as a national study. There's a master stroke he played, and this was the beginning of Xi Jinping's ambitions. He was a great leader, but to make China great, he said a good salesman. Said the story beautifully. And then came the white paper of 2015 on this fusion, and which says that China will be a great nation and we should have the most advanced military capabilities by 2049. Target he has put. In the same time, paper mentions about he also put a target of making China, like we have making India, making China on every aspect by 2025. This is talking 2010 years. Time he has given to his people. In 2016, again he made the reforms in the whole system. And Central Ministry Commission, which he chairs, he issued the directives. How do we go about it? Okay, he's the boss. Now this is a different model. India, you can't think of that model because there is more of an autocratic system, being a communist system. But he could do that. The directive was issued the reforms. What happened then? The 13th plan of China, which came from 2016 to 2020, which they call Internet Plus plan, because Internet wasn't used. Now go ahead. Thrust was who has the power, who has the chip, who has the semiconductors. Correct? And the, those scientific and technological areas, let's identify where we want to take the cutting edge over others. Then he made around 2000, 2017 the formation of Central Commission of Integration of Military Civil Development. Now, this is what the apex level China has today of military civil fusion. And Xi Jinping chairs this. So, this is the main body. It came in 2016, 2017. Now, at this time, they Integrating everybody because finally what you require is a talent. Man behind the machine, man to do innovation, man to apply that technology was the concept or requirement. So to do that, he reorganized, reallocate the whole thing and try to integrate the National Defense University, your Academy of Military Sciences, the both are in Beijing, and your National University of Defense Technology. I think Changsha, your all the 10 or 11 uh, defense uh, SOEs like PSUs, they are there, and the others, other uh, they have some groups there. No, your aerospace, aviation, your electronic department, all put together so that they can work together and looking at how we can go ahead. Next slide, please. Now, 2019, 
is a white paper came focusing on the intelligent war. Because Xi Jinping has said tomorrow's war is going to be intelligent war. Let's come up. Now they further defined it. And 14th plan, which came based on this white paper for 2021 to 2025, is focused on disruptive technologies now. One step ahead now. Now, how China looking at it? And this is thousand talent program means what I just mentioned to you. It is the man behind the machine. Whether you are doing AI application, whether you are making a smart bomb, whether you're making a precision weapon, it is a man mind going to work. So I need talent for that. And here China did what it did. They send the scholars worldwide. Worldwide. Utkarosh has gone to Utkarsh was sent to US MIT. Yashesh was sent to some other center. Agrivesh was sent to other centers and they invested money on them. All the technologies you go across because rule was I want this technology and people train. So you get the technology, overt, covert, steel, borrow, bag, whatever you want to do it, get the technology here, get trained there, and he comes back. The Chinese control they have. If Sneha has gone for a training on, 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 on say, let's say, big data system or computer or cloud computing. She is doing a PhD there. She has to come back after one year. Her parents are in cage or China. She knows that she has to go back. That's how the Chinese system works. But they invested their money beautifully. PIAD, plan, invest, acquire, and then disseminate. That's how they use the talent building for their CMF or MCF. Okay, so 1000 trillion programs are from 2020. Now, the 2021 23 policy says focus on self sufficiency. We have got the technology, we got enough trained manpower now. Why? Because China goes exposed now to the whole world how they are stealing the technology from Western countries, how the, their scholars are going there and getting the technology back to them and again working against them. So now Xi Jinping says, let's focus on self-sufficiency, innovation, collaboration, coordination in science and technology is the game now. That is the focus area. And which other area is saying is maritime, because now they are today the largest navy they have. Third aircraft just third aircraft carrier just just come online or come on just mean just launched. Okay. So maritime, if they want to Indo Pacific, they want to control the South China Sea. They got to have a strong navy. So maritime is the thrust. Aerospace, space, they're going big way in space, which people yet to think they make. They want to make solar energy up to one gigahertz in space. Just imagine the capacity and the thought process the Chinese are working on. Artificial intelligence, new energy system, quantum computing for their communication, radars, everything. Cyber, cyberspace is working big way, and they have good commission for that. And they can control anybody from there. They can hack to any system now. But that's what the internet wars are this only. And of course, the big thought process, big program going on is civilian talent exchangeability. If you have come from train on particular technology, which is niche technology, I worked in this department for two years. I gave a Prototype here, I move to the other department who also need me. That's how you're going to change now. So talent is being utilized in a most optimum judicious way through their network, through their system. But I mentioned the culture, the Chinese culture also giving them back. Okay. Now, because the whole world is after the China now, nobody wants to entertain their scholars. Every country has said, no, it's coming to a PhD with us, check what is carrying with us. Because when you are, you are in China, I know one, uh, one of our research, uh, research uh, officer, Vidya Pati in China now. So whenever we talk to him from Chennai, you will laugh, he will talk as if not like, um, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Nothing more than that. Because everything is censored there. So every university in the West now, when a Chinese scholar goes there or a Chinese professor who's located there, he the, he's looked at with a suspicion what he's carrying from here 
that is our problem now if that is the problem now to govern now xi jinping says to govern the area of nestless after wuhan virus theory the lab leak and all the blame they says biosecurity is a focus area internet data is a, is a focus area security of them and of course your artificial intelligence security everything is based on that so this is the focus area in their mcf journey today okay this is how the journey has gone so far from 90 from mao era to xi jinping era they are working this way next slide please yeah so now i put you what is a glass this is a nutshell rather being bits and pieces how what the concentration has been the so basically it is a very aggressive national strategy of ccp to make china great by 2049 the best military with technological cutting edge with the whole world on in all dimensions do not forget they have picked up this model is a us model how us started in second world war build up their diu you know all those they have their darpa all those concept they are replicated in our country and that is the basic model and they have gone ahead of them now so us is threatened basically now strategy implementation is being done by xi jinping himself he is the boss everywhere he is the boss of cmc that is central military commission he is the boss of ccimcd so boss there look okay, imagine if let's say in india if prime minister modi start looking everywhere you know what will happen he is doing that because he is focused that way in that country is possible is a top driven approach basically is not bottom up is a top driven approach so everybody listen to him is working beautifully in their country aim was to make china to be great nation and to develop the most technologically advanced military in the world by 2049 and that the aim and they are working on that whole nation approach is working towards that to eliminate the barriers of course there's a rule of mcf to eliminate the barriers the whole aim of mcf has been to eliminate the barriers in terms of research civilian military infrastructure use research path use industry private government no barriers nation needs it to it you got to do it you no know, question of i can't do it i will not give you if somebody does this she is there to control because intro flow is very fast there now what they done is they have i'll just give example to you how they organize their universities systematically reorganize the chinese science and technology and enterprise ensure that new innovation summit is passed to all the best there are 160 labs in china today 160 labs who are sharing data amongst them if i get something i share somebody else he use it for his requirement so this much exchange they have and basically they working on civil economic and military development all three directions and this is whole this strategy is aligned to china's regional and global superpower ambitions but we all know it and that's why they competing with us so fast next please yeah so what the aim have aim of this strategy has been acquisition especially from 2012 onwards acquisition of world's cutting edge technology which china didn't have so far anyhow i i put the word anyhow means i told you covert over steel bag borrow any which way and how china is following it he will send yashi sing to a university to a phd or work on a system yashi sing works for four years there get master experience and she comes back to china and with yashi sing there are four friends are working she will also tell the government they are very good and chinese government will lure them with incentive pay perks and they also come to china working for them that is the beauty of the whole system china exploiting it okay anyhow they are not they are not in ipr system they will take any which way identification and talent acquisition global hunt talent retention and talent reversal chinese had to revert back to china and return back talent come to them they retain it the best of the birth 
and they do global hunt. I get example I given to you. What Yashir Singh will go there and get four friends from there. Now, not only blueprint, they are not interested in the blueprint of a technology. They are interested in the talent. So if I'm getting a technology somewhere, who did it? Try to get that also. They did the same thing, aircraft carrier. When they got Varyak from Ukraine, they got the blueprint, but that is not enough. They got the people who actually involved with the project that time from Russians. Now, innovation and renovation, somebody says re-engineering is okay, is the first area I told you the process we're using is identification, introduction, dissemination, and re-innovation, and plan, invest, acquire, and disseminate to all the labs and let them work. The process they've been following it. Focus on institutions, universities. The Chinese 80 universities are connected with this whole project now. And the concentration has been on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. These four areas, because these four areas are connected with all the talks we do of today, AI, cloud computing. All this is connected to these four subjects, algorithms. Okay. Other thing which China is doing it, open funding, scholarship in specific research at global best places, and ensure the talents comes back an example to you. If Pooja Garla wants to do a particular subject and she know, no, I have to go to some university in Boston. Only they have the best test facility. And Chinese see this is a requirement of their, if it's it, go. You get a full incentive, cover there, you get the technology and you come back. You have to come back. You have no choice. This is a trend they're following. So the whole West is worried about it now. That's why a lot of rules have come now. Group PhD, <coughs> sorry. In Western countries, the Chinese. I'll tell you in, uh, in, 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 we were in UK, of course, I mean, um, early, I mean, late 80s, when they were flying training in France. You see any Chinese, wherever there is a military hub, aircraft industry or a electronic warfare industry, you will, I'm talking my as a young, I was a young officer in 87, 88, 89. You will find these Chinese noodles in all the shops those days, no? They will be there. But what are they? They are the cover. They are doing their business, what they're supposed to do. The Chinese started doing this business long back. And of course, the push is for making China target 2025, which is coming. So that is the whole push Xi Jinping has given to his country in that direction, good or bad, that is his nation. They have made so many industrial parks, industrial zones which are hubs for dual use innovation in the civil uh, civil system needs they can use same same facility military needs and it open for them so they have done gone that way next one please okay now because xi jinping has said the next warfare is the internet warfare in his all speeches if you decipher he has been saying we got to have a military dominance is next generation of warfare, which is intelligent warfare, and we are watching this. It's going to be cyber warfare. In a border, it will be gray zone warfare, correct? And with space warfare using artificial intelligence and, of course, the deceptive technologies. That's why they are focusing on that. Very, very clear directives, very, very clear thought process they have. The technology which they have identified with the commission, and of course, AI. Your machine learning, quantum, cloud computing, big data, semiconductors, 5G, advanced nuclear technology, aerospace, space technology, hypersonic weapons, robotics, new energy, voice intelligence, intelligence vision, UAV, underwater UAVs, your combat UAV, uh, uh, unmanned combat vehicles, autonomous driving, and of course, IoT and blockchain for commercial purposes. But they all get into military transportation. You'll be surprised, I noted down somewhere. Yeah. You know what China did? Yes. You know, in Chinese, they have this company with them Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent, iFlytel. They have given them task. Now, Baidu is doing autonomous driving, task given to him. Alibaba, do we all hit Alibaba? Was, you know, he was threatened and all those, but nothing doing. When you come to business, Chinese are very smart. 
So Alibaba was giving the cloud computing and smart cities project and he's doing it. Tencent was giving the medical diagnosis. Now this iFlight company was giving the voice intelligence and they're working in this. Another one, they were a company in Hong Kong, which was actually used to work on facial recognition features. She is now the company is working on intelligent vision, which they are part of their target companies, uh, target uh, technologies. Okay, so this is how they have gone about it. They are used like Google. We have Google, all this work in our country. How many chaps are working on this country of technology for military? I get to see it in my 36 year career. Nobody has come. Don't blame them. Our system is not that. We have no trust in a private players so far. It's changing. Well, take time. Now, what its last point is China has exploited the open and transparent nature of global research enterprise system. Means whole university, you can go to any place to Canada, the US, UK, Germany. I can go to do PhD or my master's or any research anywhere. China has actually exploited this open system. Send their people to only to get the data, the research, or the technology from their IPR stealing, which they don't believe in it. So basically, this is what China exploited in the West in so many years. And now they are claiming to be a masters. Next one, please. Yeah. Now, just to give you the how the system works in China, with the chain of command or how they're controlling it. The CMC, of course, Central Military Commission is a big boss, and of course, Xi Jinping is the chairman. Then you have the Central Commission of Integration of Military Civil Development, which controls the military civil fusion from the neck, nose, whatever you call it, from top down, and it's a national level approach. So she is the boss. He is the boss. His directive, nobody can deny, nobody can defy. As simple as that. Order pass, you got to abide by that. The another another area is the first area is the cyber. So they have cyber, sorry, Central Cyber Space Affair Commission. Again, the apex level, and she is the boss. You can see that now. Fusion in one side, and cyber space alone is the importance because tomorrow's war. The internet war, cyber and AI going to play there. So these two he controlling himself. Next level is your state administration SSS PNS, which is state administration for science and technology. Correct. Now this is what integration for national defense. This is a PRC level, your government level. Like in our, in our case, you can say government or state level or national level, secretaries level the coordination who give clearances okay in our case we say um, what do you call it bureaucracy or you know red tape is in their case in the same level coordination is happening because top level approach then they got at military level we also have that in military level they have your central military commission science and technology commission in which the pla level officers of three four service whatever system they have they coordinate with military civil fusion agencies, whether it's an institution, whether it's a laboratory, whether it is a so they are the ones who are the coordinators for the defense directly. And they are part of CMC, CMC chaired by Xi Jinping. You can see the link is everywhere. Top different. The next one is MSRSC, which is military science research steering committee. Now, this they have totally copied from US model. Absolutely, US model they copied. US came with Defense Innovation Unit, DIU. Then they came with DARPA, correct? Advanced Research Project Agencies. Then they came up with National Security Innovation Commission. Then they came with National Security Innovation Network. This is a US organization. They have copied that and made this MSRSC, which is nothing but this model copied there. And what it does, this Commission look around, travel around, see around, and get the key technology and identify new innovations or innovators, both talent and the technology in commercial sector, and how can we use in linking to the 
PLA military network. This is job of this MRSC doing it. So you see how they have copied the US model in their own way and which fits them beautifully because they are an autocratic social system. Xi Jinping is ordering it, everybody is following it. This is how they have gone about it. Okay. Next, please. Okay, I this is a Chinese paper I have read some time back. Now you see this Chinese paper of military civil fusion, deep development patterns. Now, what is doing is you can see six, three, one, n and one. So, what this is saying is this is the whole concept. Now, what are these six other they, they call it a system of system, which is basically your manufacturing, science and technology, your education. Okay. All these are six six major systems are here. Then they came to major three are major security domains. That is your maritime, space, and cyberspace. So there you can see a thrust on cyberspace and space. Because there are two arenas in tomorrow's warfare going to play. Space is for your ISR and energy weapons. Of course, cyberspace to dealing you on the ground, jamming your systems, and you're playing around with your AI. The last is, let's go down a little bit. I'll see it. Just go up a little bit. Oh, yeah, okay, thank you. Now, here is your nascent, any nascent technology area, which is your biotech, new energies, and AI. They cover this, this category here. And last one is very interesting one. It's a going out. Now, what is going out is, please remember, China came in 2000 the national strategy of BRI, correct? And 2014, they came out with strategy of MCF. This is what going out is BRI. Now, BRI is fits in this here because this is China's approach to so the global approach. You go outward, connect people there, and when something can't come from US to me, I am working in a third country, I will get the thing to that country and get it from there. This is project actually working in that direction. This is going out. It comes connected beautifully there. So this is how their networks works. The six, three, and one. Next one, please. Yeah, one more. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, okay. It is just a show you very, very nothing great about it from the same uh, paper. Now you have a military and civil research institutions. You have military civilian <clears throat> institution of higher education, universities, and you know, other things. You have state on your defense PSUs, you have your private companies, and your high level coordinate departments, various levels. Okay. Now each one is basically is a network. Each are talking to everybody. There's a technological co collaboration, there's a communication, there's an information technology, there's a capital and talent, everything is linked to each other. This is what military civil fusion is all about. There are no barriers. You can talk to anybody. And fun flow, the talent flow, the policy flow is interlinked to everybody. Okay. Next one, please. Okay. Now, just to give an example to you, I think great. USA, we all know. After the Second World War, they, they made this system and they went around. They made something of military innovation. And now look at the Musk. He is controlling the space. He's a private player. Okay, in a space now. France, France went same way after the Second World War. They built up their industries, which were making class military systems, submarines, aircraft. What it helps? Help their country. It helps the economy as well. We bought Rafale from them. Correct. We bought Scorpion from them. Germany, we bought as to submarine from them. It's just that way. Israel, another example, beautiful example. Of course, they have a compulsory military service for two, three years and all join different levels. What happens there? I hope Agni will prove that that way someday. But what they do is now a gentleman who got or a, or a lady who got an idea of he worked in a particular department, he knows what was lacking or what was required. He comes back and get into that field. And comes out with the innovation. Look at a small country making a world class weapon sensors. That is what your MCF or CMF is all about. South Korea, we don't talk about much, but a lot to learn from South Korea. 
South Korea make submarines. They started after us. We started invading our SDW submarines. Yeah, like in India, when they came, two from there, three we made in two we made in India in Mexican docks, Bombay. They started after us. They're German submarine, but our political system, corruption, corruption, and they stopped. South Korea started after that. The German line today, where Indian Navy is looking for AIP submarine, and we put the global tenders, who's willing to sell us? South Korea. This is the lesson I'm going to give you here. The pinch of salt, but there's a hard fact of life. Political will, industry, MSMEs, we had everything in Bombay, but we lost it. Somebody had gained it looking at us. They did the same mistake. And today, South Korea got all those parts, equipment, technology, which we want. And you want to sell us. This is the classic case. Turkey, small country. Of course, very, 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 very important player in today's uh, Russia and Ukraine war control the Black Sea through the, those two channels, which he controls by the act. Now, what Turkey did many years back, he sent one gentleman scientist to MIT University to do PhD on UAVs. How UAVs can be used many years back, how UAV can be utilized in a warfare aggressively. He came back and he made this so called. But our UAVs, which became a talk about town in Russia and Ukraine war, he was the gentleman on whose name this UAV is. So, nation invests like that and they come back and do it. Get it? We, I mean, it may be looking nice, we call, but anybody who is abroad doing great, we say Indian friend, Indian born Indian. What Indian hasn't come back to India back? I left my IIT in 1983. Many of our batchmates are abroad. So when we discuss, we have a you know, like Google meet like this, then we say, yeah, you have not come back here. Every year, the top, top loss of IIT go abroad. So what the US is gaining is our talent there. Our talent never comes back. There is a drawback, which China has, we don't have. Okay, next, please. Well, this is a discussion. What India way? India is not China. We can't have. The Xi Jinping way here is a democratic system, party, multi party, different system, different social equations. We are a five, not even we are becoming a five trillion economy. China is 15 trillion. We have a different economy itself. We have no, no, no wish to be expansionist like China. But of course, we know our regional players. With that, now the theme which has come Arthur Nirbar Bharat self-sufficient, I think is a very good concept to start with. Brahmo selling LA your Teja going to Philippines, it's just a beginning. Navy started this project many years back with many own ships, many own aircraft carriers, own submarines, nuclear submarines. Is it great? Arthur Nirbar Bharat, why not? We can do it. But what is required is we got to give more room to our private players, which and we got to trust them. Whether they are tech companies, whether they are manufacturing companies, we got to trust them and share the knowledge with them, which in my view is still very restricted. Defense corridors which are coming up, one in UP, one in Tamil Nadu, are a good concept. That's what China has gone. So they have to come. We just de declared them, let the companies come. We make a research park that all can do research in that particular place. IITs are doing it. IIT Chennai has a research park. Anybody can use it. But much more has to be done that way. Which are the areas India can focus on? Defense. We have a shipbuilding beautifully now. We are making world class ships today. Now, your Vishakapatnam class is almost 80, 85% indigenous, bearing one or two weapon sensors, which we don't make ourselves. Space. We have mastered the art. Our ISRO is doing a great job. Atomic energy. Communications. We have so many IT companies. So many IT graduates come out every time. The communication, we can master it. And AI, one field. Today, I see any university everywhere is AI, AI, AI. But AI is there only books passing exams. Where is the AI application? We have to work on that. We have the talent. We have to groom them. We got to have a no, bar no barrier policy 
and has to be a top driven like Xi Jinping, maybe the prime minister level, PMO level, and has to be monitoring from them. Have you achieved, not achieved, why not achieve? We do say like every state has one single single window clearance for industry, but I think actually not. Actually, it is not. Incentive for tech innovation, this should be required in this country. Though we say Indian Jugaad, that word comes Jugaad in on videos and movies, but there are a lot of young boys, young girls in various universities, they come with innovations, but we haven't publicized because like Chinese 160 labs are connected and there is commission of military science looking at those innovators and innovation, connect that to labs and they utilize. We don't have that system, we need that system of, of giving incentive to innovation and the innovators. And of course, India has to go, if you want to go MCFA anywhere nearby, talent hunt, we just mentioned to you, groom them with a scholarship or send abroad for training, whatever it is, not the China way, no stealing, let them groom and come back. The proper IPR if required. Acquire the technology as we're doing in the TOT in all cases, and then build up from here. Retention, very, very important. Our I mean, enjoy science, IIT, so many chaps comes every year, retain them here, why they're going out, give them projects, which are not connected till now. And who have gone abroad, can they come back? I'm sure Sundar, Sundar Bachai will not come back now. But the question is, if China can get them back, they are a different policy, but can we have some system of national belonging and they come back to us? Next slide, please. Thank you very much. I have finished. Now I'll take any questions you have. I hope I was within time. A thorough understanding of the civil military fusion by the Chinese in many sectors is key in understanding the implications of investment in China and the net impact these allegedly civil technology transfers will have on the global arms, global arms race. To enlighten us more on this, I have a couple of questions for Commodore Vijesh Garg, sir. My first question is from Utkarsh Nikoshe, uh, being can the car can the currently military can the current military fusion of china make it stronger enough to challenge the united states now i will say these are the question at this stage more more of a hypothetical correct it is it's like a boxing ring china is doing the best he can do in the race but i'm sure us will not have it happen and why i'm saying is the well, us has come out with a lot of rules now they have, in 2018, seeing this Chinese pattern, they are threatened, yes. But in 2018, they came with a rule, they call FIRMA, called Foreign Investment Risk Modernization Act. Chinese companies were investing there, getting technology back. Similarly, the Trump administration had come out in 2020 on Chinese students to control what field they are going, what field they can't go. So in my personal view, they are competitors. Chinese can go to any extent that I can't deny, but I think at this stage it's difficult as of now. It's my my, my personal appreciation. Uh, so we have a uh, few more questions by Utkarsh Nikoshi. First being, can the aggressive military civil fusion of China be called as military first policy, as in case of North Korea? Uh, North Korea is slightly uh, more of a vague, uh, I, I will say rogue sort of policy. China is not gone to that extent. Correct? China is yes, connected to the world with global supply chain, economic chain. So you can't go that way. The whole aim is economic development as well. So two, two concepts are very different. I don't think China is anywhere near on the line of North Korea. Okay, sir. what different? So we have a, we have a question by our head, uh, Yashas Arya, sir. Despite uh, investing heavily on research, China still indulges in reverse engineering to get hold of high-end technology. India, as of now, also depends on Western and Russian technology for defense sector. So how can defense exporting countries prevent China from stealing technologies? Should USA ban defense exports? Uh, ban defense exports to China's allies like Pakistan? Uh, well, I, I just mentioned to you that the U.S. has already put a lot of uh, rules and regulations there now. 
and they are looking very critically of Chinese connection or anything. You see Hawaii on 5G, everybody banning him now. Correct? This example to you. So everybody is very, because every Chinese company is actually stealing data. You saw India itself, when we ban those apps, you know, app banning after Galwan, why it was done? Data. Then we ban all the Chinese investment in India, because again, same Kahani. Correct? Now you just the last two days news that all these companies, uh, mobile phone companies, so much of money they're making and putting here and there. So there's a big game China's play everywhere. And the whole world is aware of that, along with that, and taking action accordingly. Sir, I would like to add up on that question. Like, for example, we had China rec recently uh, launched their big uh, big ship Fujian. Fuj Fujian. Sir, aircraft carrier. Aircraft carrier. Aircraft carrier. I'm very sorry. I forgot the term. I'm very sorry, sir. Fujian was released. So, but many people were saying that it is it is a ditto copy of various uh, aircraft carriers of US, and the technology was literally stolen. So, are the legislature which are which are in place actually working or doing anything to stop the leak? The first basically? thing I mentioned, China does not belong in IPR. The intellectual property right China does not belong into it. China's first aircraft carrier, how it came, Australian made the that they decommissioned the HMS Melbourne, correct? And they were to scrap it like we sent to Alang, Gujarat, all the Vikrath had uh, Alang. So Australia sold it to China, okay? And when they sold it, they removed everything on the ship and the rudders were locked, knowing Chinese um, Chinese nature. Chinese got the ship and kept it for next eight years to study the whole system. Okay, then they bought a Russian aircraft carrier called Kiev class, Minsk. Mm. Correct? Mm. Again, they did the same thing. But supposed to go for, 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 for immediately for the, you know, dismantling, you know, as a scrap. They did not do it. They studied it. And finally, they got Varyak from Ukraine in the name of making a floating restaurant. So they bought a floating restaurant. They wanted to bought it. It was halfway. It was halfway. They bought it, kept it for, for a good six years. Correct? And yes, 2008 onward, they started work on that. And 2011, they actually started doing sea trials. And 2013, they commissioned it. But remember, you may steal a technology, but I said, is a man behind the machine matters. Yes, sir. We have been flying aircraft from aircraft carrier 1961. Of aircraft. There are no, no problem for us. They're making these new aircraft carriers. Some report says it is steam engines. Some say it's a diesel engines. It's a confusing. Okay. So it's basically a steam, a steam ship as I see it. And they are using those catapults, emails. Correct? Yeah. Remember, even the US has not mastered the art till now. There's a lot of problems in that. I don't think Chinese will be able to sustain that. This is my personal experience. So they're way behind. Launching an aircraft and publicity is one aspect, psychological warfare. <laughs> Correct? Yes, sir. First time China's aircraft carrier operated in Japan. First time they operated that after so many years. Okay. They have in their own area yet to come to Indian Ocean or any time. We'll see that time. How much they can operate. So they're quite, they are far behind all those things. But they are, those are hardwares. I'm Chinese working on, a, on, on the niche technologies, AI, cyberspace, in which they don't require hardware. Okay. Sir, I had a personal question. For example, as there is increasing awareness about the military civil, uh, civil fusion, which is go, uh, which is becoming a literal official doctrine of the CCP uh, at this level. So, sir, don't you think it will be uh, quite contradictory to the Chinese aim to become a very big economy, as China is still heavily reliant on foreign uh, foreign investment for R and D, as its own R and D itself is not that great when it comes to commercial usage. See, economy from nineteen eighties. To 2010, China picked up a pace, correct? Yes, and they become the second largest economy, growth-wise. So you are a huge economy, like Reliance. If Reliance has sometimes the share goes down, and you see so many crores lost, it doesn't make a difference to him. So China is right on the debt stage, correct? Yes, sir. This is one part of it. The economic growth is better than US, but the size of the economy is quite large, correct? Yes, sir. So every country balance it out. He has an aim. 
if because they say is my military is strong and china is expressionist the aim, whole aim he need a strong military around it taiwan issue japanese issue south china issues correct he yes, need sir. a strong military and when if you are a strong bodybuilder like yashas i am sure you won't take panga with him <laughs> correct that secure your economy there's a, there's a concept the chinese are going sir i had a, one more question then i will move sir for example as, as there is a military civil fusion going on that means anything which ha negatively hampers the civil setup is bound to hamper the military setup as well for example and then we have for example a recent evergrande collapse military uh, economic meltdown which is happening and there is a recent talk about chinese slowdown like there was a news that chinese people are giving melons because they are not able to bring up the cash for rent and for example then there is shadow debt about going on if it hampers the chinese civil infrastructure monetary monetary part then won't it affect the military part as well see funding be military program any military in any country correct yes, you sir. have funding your budgeting if gdp is contracting your funding will contract i'm sure yes i put in the national security the first was economic security you don't forget that yes. my first point was economic security no nation want to go economic weak if you're economic weak you can't make a strong military russian did that russian is suffering today the whole russian complex went to make my only arms 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 today the economy is in shambles all right yes sir is that so china i'm very smart. sorry for that question sir <laughs> no, no 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 this is uh, the whole aim of talking is this only yes <laughs> so we have a question from shubham thorat he yeah. said respected sir how you see indian government strategic think tanks like idsa i icwa contributions in strategy and what are the difference between india's think tanks and china's think tanks and what should we need to do for strategic research well <laughs> this is a very very typical question no what happened a think tank correct is a independent think tank <laughs> they are research scholars research people like you and me anybody else i analyze the situation and i put this is what my analysis is okay and after 10 papers i take the gist of them i said this could be the point for policy maker because i'm not a policy maker idsa or icwa or nmf or c3s is not a policy makers yes, you can suggest to policy makers am i right this is a job of think tank now in a democratic system like us you have a foreign ministry there is a pmo they will take this and there's how it fits in the overall policy which they are looking at it. so there is a different ball game altogether but yes there are good inputs goes to ministry with the defense ministry or, um, or foreign ministry and they take it some of them some they don't so so is it fair to say that most chinese think tanks as they are not independent they are more like global times or china today watered down version yeah they they don't have freedom that's quite true that's quite true because we had the research associate with us i i can tell you with authority yes, vidyapati spent a good 3 3 years with us here in china china chennai now doing his phd in china so we thought he had got a lot of inputs to us but when we when we, we call him for a talks he only say yes sir good sir good morning sir sunny sir that's all but when he many comes to in china i mean to chennai and we hear of china is a different story altogether So yes. they have a lot of sensors there, unfortunately. Definitely, sir. So we have uh, quite a lot of questions from uh, Utkarsh, Utkarsh yeah. Nikoshe. Yeah. Although larger in size, the Chinese military lack experience since 1979. How can the civil military fusion fill in the gap of experience, lack of experience? I said that. Yes, the sir. The men behind the machine, the Chinese are realized, and I can give my naval experience with them. We have seen them in the Indian Ocean very often. chinese hardware wise not so good okay but that's why they realize it is not the hardware in tomorrow's warfare any ship will be seen by the satellites but you can use the cyber space artificial intelligence to jam my missiles my systems i think or maybe the space weapons 
advanced technologies he can take on me this is what they're working on not the hardware so this is their yeah sir i would like to extend a bit on this sir for example we had the recent report of chinese mercenaries doing certain acts of brutality in drc so can you say chinese mercenaries are technically their offshoots to gain a bit experience here and there in in conflict zones basically chinese have mastered the art of grey zone warfare correct yes sir. they made they made fishing boats with his, or with his remote control which all china they are around taiwan correct yeah. so they can do anything thank you sir for the de- for the detailed analysis i'm sure all of us would have understood china's civil and military fusion to a greater level and greater depth i thank you for your patience for answering all of our questions as we end this event i would like to thank garg sir the audience and the team goodbye everyone and have a good day ahead jai hind thank you so much all of you thank you so much